Okay, Felvi and Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time and participating in uh, Talking Objects Lab. Welcome to Berlin. You just arrived this morning. <laughs> um, I wanted to begin our conversation actually with a more personal question because this uh, you know, big term decolonization is something a lot of people are talking about also in the context of restitution, particularly here in Europe and Germany. Um, but how do you personally define decolonization or how do you um, understand it and, and express it for yourself? I think it's a question of uh, trying to find uh, an equilibrium in the, in the relation you know, between Africans, I will say, and the former colonizer. And I think the relationship between those two entities have been very impacted by history. And I think also that the idea that history passed and don't, and, don't, and, don't, and don't left trace is not true. I think we can't blame all the, all the, the contemporary times. We can blame them you know, on, on the behalf of history, but history leave traces. And probably uh, decolonizing is, is, is trying to find all the problematic common traces in the relations. So how to be able to reinvent a relation which is not, you know, I will, uh, which is not uh, shadow or deeply driven by this dark, dark side of the history. So you can look at the, you know, at the economic relation, the, the diplomatic, but you can also look at the relation of, of knowledge, of imaginaries. And I think probably it's just the idea to say that how can we relate each to others outside of a power dynamic asymmetric relation. And you can find this power dynamic asymmetric relation in different spaces. And I think for everyone, there is a places where the colonization or the, the coloniality affects you. It's not the same places. And it can be, you know, it can be something very, you know, it's, it, it, it can be your relation with your, your languages and your imaginaries. If you are a writer, why do you write in French and in English? And why aren't you able to write in your own, own languages? Why the knowledge that came from your society is not acknowledged as knowledge? And why do you have to, you know, to acquire a lot of kind of knowledge that is validated by academics and the knowledge that, that is produced by your, your fellows, your society? You know? So I think it's, it's a very wide question. But if I had to emphasize one point is the idea that finding a new equilibrium in the relation, you know, being outside of the, f the fascination, the domination, even if it's a, a subtle one but how to relate in a totally different way with, you know, with few people. Um, and you were just mentioning particularly also the relationship between uh, African countries and former colonizers. And I'm also wondering in, in this whole, like, that's a very bilateral sort of like understanding, but what role do also Afro-diasporic communities play that have, you know, for a long time now migrated into Europe, for example, but also the United States and globally speaking as well. Um, how do you see these wider networks and relationships? Um, I think there's a lot of things that could be said, you know, from the point of view of the diaspora. Mm -hmm. First of all, the diaspora is forming a kind of synthesis, you know, they, they came from Africa, they've been a transplant in a different landscape, and they have to deal with this idea of reinventing themselves with different kind of roots and imaginaries. And being, I would say, at the cross border of these two, two worlds, and, 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 and one of the, you know, opportunity they have is to be able to, if they want to build on the better part of each world. You know, it's a beautiful idea, it's not very simple to do in, the, in your daily life, but they have this, you know, you know they have the, these two feet, you know, in two soils, and, 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 and they can be the one who build a bridge. And there's a lot of, Africans from the diaspora that I saw that are involved in the, I would say actually in the rebuilding, the renewing, the reinventing of what is to be an African or what is the position of Africa in the, in the global world. Because they have a kind of empathy, they know the continent, they are linked with that, but they also from elsewhere. And I think uh, 
a lot of cultural dynamics that are going actually that are going on are from it came from them you know and i feel a very intense desire to 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 be you know part of the rebuilding of the continent but you know more i would say you know you know you, you have the economic side but i would say in the imaginaries of what is the continent uh, in the space of culture in the space of art in the space of music you know in the space of the african science or 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 semiotics how you know what is the trace of africa in the global cultural world so so they are part of the story and the movement what does it what does it still need to also maybe improve relationships between the diaspora and the continent thinking about infrastructures or also um, systems because i feel there's still um, I'm just like thinking about so many friends who grew up in the diaspora and then choose to move back home, you know, whatever country that might be on the continent, and then understanding oh, all these infrastructures are missing still. And then that, of course, is, is very much triggering your imaginary then because you have to start building and inventing new things. But what does it still need for, for this relationship? I think it's, it's not always an easy re relation, you know, the, because there is the reality of Africa and the, and the idea of Africa. You know, and and uh, going back to the African continent is being come confront to the reality of the continent, and not the f f fantasy or the imaginaries that you build from the diaspora. And sometimes there is a kind of you know shock or, or difficulties of being able to connect the image you had and the, and the daily life. And I think uh, when things go well, you know, there is a kind of you know rediscovering of the continent and, and, and you know, and extra. But sometimes also there is a kind of replication of the Western imaginaries by, the, by some African from the diaspora to Africans, you know, because with this idea of, uh, you know, uh, seeing the lack everywhere, you lack organization, you lack infrastructure, extra, or sometimes uh, we know how to to show you how things should be because we came from the the more developed you know side of the world and i think it's interesting also to 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 to, to be able to unlearn or to interrogate uh, what is the gaze through which the continent is looked and, and i think it's it's a global problem we had with the rest of the world you know this idea of being seen most of the time through our lack or deficiency or handicaps and not being seen through our strength and power and vitality and, and originality or being seen or always being looked through the lens that we have to be there you have to be, you know you know there's a kind of benchmark and most of the african societies are not looked just uh, uh, from the perspective of, of, of what they are, but they are looked from the perspective of what they should be. So when you arrive and, and looking the continent through the perspective of what the continent should be, you're always disappointed. But what does it mean that in your imaginaries you have a kind of image or a benchmark of an ideal situation? And this is a problem, problem of vision and, and, and perspective. And I think being from the continent don't you know you know you know it's not it, it doesn't mean that there is not a, a difficulty of of solving this question of from which from a perspective are, are you looking you know i notice every day that i travel <laughs> even if yesterday there's always the senegalese from the diaspora who is crying, shouting on the Senegalese authority because they are not well organized in the airport. That, you know? Okay, that's you know, a scene you like. Every okay. every travel, and it's always someone who's coming from the diaspora. Back yes, or? always, always someone. Yeah. Well, you know, I, you know, I know how things are organized. I know why they are organized. I know why 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 they have such deficiency in this type of organization. So I take my plane and, and I'm be patient. But 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 you, but you have always a Senegalese guy, you know, who came from the diaspora. He's always shouting, and, you know, always claiming. And the idea is that uh, when will we be one day 
very well organized as European countries because I live there and I don't understand why here we are not at the same stage. You know, it's something interesting that it tells, you know, so. I'm, I was also thinking, particularly, the, you know, thinking through the entire decolonization process, the, the body plays a very important role and also right now in different contemporary art contexts. Um, and I know that you also mentioned the body in your, in your writing, you know, and, and that it plays a crucial role in decolonization or in the decolonization process. And I was wondering if you could elaborate a little more on that, because I think all these racial and racist hi hierarchies that we're dealing with that are coming from this very ground here, from Germany and, and Europe in particular, uh, they attack the body. Uh, that is um, sort of like the, the, the material, right? That, is attacked and how what role does the body play in the decolonization process i think if you if you go back to the time of african slave trade you know you can see that the, the african bodies were commodify you know objectify you know they could be sold or used as a capital etc so so i think this long process of dehumanizations also have left very deep traces, you know, on this relation with the African bodies and the black bodies. What kind of traces? Yeah, it, you know, racism, just racism. If you live in the state and, and, and you are a black body, if you, if you meet a, a, a cop, you should, you know, be very careful, you know, because there's a, a long-term imaginaries build, you know, on, 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 on the black bodies, you know, it's not, they don't have a rational behavior, you know. You know they they have built you know during centuries the image of someone who could be aggressive, etc., etc. You know all these imaginaries. You can't face it just you know because it's a long-term imaginary. And the and the black Hamu families when they have kids, they learn them to behave. You know if you meet the cops, you have to behave like that because etc. etc. You know. So uh, uh, there is a book of Tanesi quote. Uh, he wrote in, in, in one of his books that his young boy of 16 years old, he, he, he asked him to go to live to France because he didn't want him to grow in the U.S. and be the one whose own nobody is impacted by, you know, this way of being, being obliged to behave, to hide yourself, not to feel that, that, you, that you are aggressive. And he wanted him just to experience the freedom of being himself, you know, in a place where He's not seen as a danger, etc., etc. So I think even if the way you cross the road, even if the way you walk, <laughs> you know, in the U.S., in, in the U.S., you distinguish Africans from African Americans. African they behave normally, naturally, because they don't don't have this long story on their body. African Americans they have a way of you know dealing with the space. But I think also that the body is a site of knowledge. You know, it's very interesting, dance, martial arts, a lot of, the everybody knows a lot. And, 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 and in the long history of African people, their bodies have been very important sites, sites of knowledge, embed knowledge. And just from a point of view of knowledge, there's a lot to unfold there. Uh, dance, for example, dance is a way is a way of knowing and relating to to to, to reality, and the, and the body knows much more than the brain. And if we try to widen the archive of knowledge, we can explore the bodies as sites of knowledge of different type of knowledge. The gesture, you know, you know, there's a lot to to dig there the gesture and the transmissions. And and why do you think, or like where, where could that, especially like talking about black, and I was also just thinking like, for example, Tenehisi Code, if he thinks that his, his son is way better off in France, but isn't that also an illusion? <laughs> is, is he really way better no, off in France? No, France has his own problem it's, of yeah. racism, etc., etc. Yeah. But uh, we, we've seen it with a lot of case, Adam Traore, but I think, uh, it's not the same story than the U.S. You know, there is a story of centuries of you know embed racism in the structure and and, and, and structural and systemic etc. etc. And probably you know in the in between the two 
World War, you know, a lot of American artists, you know, even Miles Davis, they came in France, try to find a place where, you know, they experienced less racism. Uh, James Baldwin went to Turkish, a lot of places in Europe, you know, I'm trying to escape, you know, this kind of, you know, you know, US racism. Even if they know that there is no safe place at all, but uh, you know the place are, you know, you, you have different um, m levels or or tastes of racism. You know. um, and what what role? I mean, it's interesting that you you're both an economist and an artist as well, a, a musician. And how do you how do you combine these disciplines in your own work of decolonization? Like very practically speaking, um, how does that work for you? I think they are just different gesture of transmissions you know you know yes. if you if you look at them if you are a scholar you transmit uh, knowledge that is validated by you know the institutions the institutions is say okay this knowledge you know is validated so you can transmit it in a in an institution called academia if you do music or literature you transmit you transmit something different something that, that came from your, your sensibility but something that came from your your subjectivity, but build on your experience of world life. But it's also you know, it's not knowledge, but it's you know because knowledge is too narrow to put that you know in a space of knowledge. And I think uh, during my, during the first years, I was uh, separating. I was being a scholar, trying being a musician, being a writer, and not uh, trying to find a place where these different um, traditions, I, I could mix them. But this last year, I'm mixing them, even if in my teaching. I, have a, I had a class this year called Music, History and, and Politics, in which I was teaching a contemporary history of post-colonial Africa through the musical archive. And I was showing that the music can teach us about the political history of the continent, the social history, the cultural history, of course. But it's an archive that we can build on this archive beyond the idea of you know of, of beauty harmony sense etc etc but it was also a space of knowledge so i'm trying to you know to to bring them them together and make them resonate and, and i think you know there is a transdisciplinary space where you can build on the specificity or the the different type of intelligibility that each archive provides you and each archive is a, you know it reveals a part of, of the reality and you can you know try to you know bring them in a space a kind of ecology and make them in, interact so in my new teaching i'm trying to do that i'm trying to build on on the musical archive on the philosophical archive and try to show that each archive you know shows a part of the reality but there's another part that is better unfold by this type of archive and they could also meet and interact and, and we don't have to build, you know, strict boundaries between them. Even if the distinction between academia and the rest, I don't f f find it very relevant at all. You know, you know, an academy is, is just a, an epistemic um, community. A band, a musical band, is an epistemic uh, um, community. You know, they met, they play together, and they produce something. They invent. You know, there is knowledge. They, um, there is history. So you have intersubjectivity and, and they produce a kind of intelligibility to the reality. You know, it's, it, it's a community of knowledge, a musical band. You know, it's the same that, you know, a research from a community. So I'm trying to make those kind of bridge and show that it's just a, a, it's just a way of looking at things, but at all the categories that, you know, that have divided all these disciplines, you know, they, you know, we can move beyond them. And what, in your view, does this, like this transdisciplinary and also transcultural way of working, what does it tell you about the human experience or being, being human in the end? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, I think after the, you know, during what we call the European modernity, the idea was to, to be specialized, you know, to, to be very specialized. And we divide the reality in, 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 in different little portions and everyone has to take care of a portion of the reality and try to know a lot of things. And, and I think it was interesting for the, the human community because we get a lot of information, you know, being so precise. But at the end of the day, when you're experiencing the reality, you're experiencing a totality. You, you're not dividing your reality to different portions. 
And I think probably one of the things we have to learn to do again is to reaccommodate all these different persons and be able to have a kind of holistic you know, experience. It's difficult to do it in knowledge because there's a lot to know and, you know, and, and, and being specialized was a way of you know, dividing ding, ding the work. But, but my sense is that we have gained a lot of information but we are less smart, you know, being, you know, we are less intelligent because the idea is, is not knowing all that we have to know. The idea is being able to link things, to how we connect the, the, the dots, you know, to have and a kind to, of... And to embody also. Ab absolutely, right? to like that's experience it, you know, from yeah. the inside and, 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 and to be able to probably stand on, on your feet, you know, on mm. all your feet. Quite literally, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also requires, in, in your thinking, a, s a certain like um, I don't know if you can call it spiritual awakening, but a, um, a spiritual revolution, may maybe too. Um, if you want to elaborate. Yes, because that. probably, but probably it's it, it's a Western thing to divide the body and the soul, the mind the spirit and the body, you know, or the nature and, and the culture, all these big divisions. Even if this last year we have a lot of French philosophers or, or, or European writers that are, that are trying to say, okay, let's go beyond this divide. But, but I think the division between the material and the spiritual, you know, has impact deeply the way of relating and seeing reality. Probably in places like Africa, there is a more holistic way of experiencing things, you know, and, and less divisions between materiality, spirituality, the mind, the body and the soul. They work, they work to, 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 to get away. And I think probably uh, there is something there to, 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 to regain, you know, to regain, to like being, to reintegrate? To yes, to it? reintegrate for the one who have lost it. Not all, but 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 you know the part of the of the humanity who has being objectifying the reality, so dominating the reality, so controlling, so ex extracting oneself from the reality or from the nature, etc., and and being the one who is the master of the of the nature. And, and I think a lot of ecological problem we have, you know, came from that idea that we are that we are separate. And a lot of cosmologies from Latin America, from the Amazonian, from the African, are the cosmologies of the link. You know, a human being is, an, is a kind of assemblage. It's not just a human being. It's a kind of assemblage with a lot of different entities that are beyond the humans. And, 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 and I think probably there, there is a, a mythologies and cosmologies or imaginaries of, of this kind of assemblage that we can build on, you know, to, 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 to probably uh, heal our relation with all the livings. I don't like the word environment because environment put us at the center. We are the center and the surroundings, but to, to heal the relation with, with all, all the livings that we are linked with. Mm. Yeah, healing is such, that's a very big word too. Or what, like, what is healing to you? Oh, <laughs> I've been talking because we've we've had different interviews with artists that will perform tomorrow and over the weekend too. And I've asked each one like, what what do you understand? Like, how do you define healing? And because it's it is also a buzzword at this moment mm -hmm. in, in the art context, but I think even in academia, you know, a lot of people are talking about care and repair. Um, uh, so I, it will be interesting to hear from you. What no, I think I think if you look at it in a global scale, we can say you know that we, a human being, have a lot of damage. The who is, who is the we? Uh, is it know, really like? If I'm trying to be diplomat, I say we, yeah. we human beings. So I'm yeah. taking a part of the responsibility. Mm -hmm. But if I want to be precise, it's the Western world mm -hmm. that have done a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. You know, in the in. In, in, in the global environment. The African continent is responsible of 4% of the emission of, 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 of CO2, just 4% of the whole African continent. A country like, like France, only France, 60 million of people is responsible of more than between one and 2% of the CO2 emissions. So all the African continent, 4%. So 
you know, and 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 the lack of biodiversity is being experienced in the lack Chad in a lot of places in the African continent. So even if this notion of Anthropocene, you know, if you take the, the concept, the Anthropos is the human beings, but it's not the old Anthropos, you know. It's, so you can change it, you can say it's, it's the Capitalocene, or you, or you can say it's the, it's the Western world that is responsible. But I don't think that just putting the responsibility on the Western world and not trying to say, okay, uh, at all, you know, it's human beings that, that are responsible and we have to think it through this perspective of the of the of the human being and probably raise our awareness around this question but so the we is you know the, to be general is the the human beings to be precise so so we can locate where the damage come from actually but uh, we have done a, a lot of a lot of, if you have heard a lot the the nature the biotop the environment and we need to repair it or rethink the way we relate with, you know, with the living. Actually, there is a question of uh, will we be able to sustain or maintain the natural conditions of our lives? It's not just a, you know, an idea. It's not just a buzz idea. It's, it's a reality. It's a real, yeah, yes, pressing, yes. pressing question. And, yeah. and I think yeah. you know, it's probably one of the more pressing questions. What's your uh, outlook? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Without being like cynical or yes, uh, I don't know. But, but no, at the same time, there is a, a raise in the awareness on this question. Yeah. So, yeah. but at the same time, probably the question is, uh, what is driving human beings to continue this way of relating with? the world, with the nature, with the people, but uh, even if they know, you know, where is, you know, where to start the work? Is it psychological? Is it in the unconscious? Where is the problem? It's, you it's, know? A, it's, it's a false promise, it's lies that we tell us, we keep telling ourselves. So it's, a, it's a false promise for, for um, I don't riches and... and um, yes, but I feel that the, my sense is that, that the question is, is probably deeper because it's not, just a, it's not just a question of information, you know, it's not just a question of raising the awareness. There, there is something deeper than that to drive us. And I think if we didn't find the right place to start the work, probably we'd, you know, we'd be always surprised and shocked why despite all the knowledge we had on this question we are not able to ra to radically change if you look at the, the the question of the vaccine and the pandemic we have the knowledge and we know that if everyone is not vaccinated in the world in the global world it would not work but you know the the, the you know the idea of of of, the, of you know of the of the clan extra extra everyone is trying to safeguard his own entities not not being homosolidary and and we know that rationally the solidarity is the solution you know you know being able to 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 think ourselves as a, as a human community we know it but where did the real problem lies i think it's a question mm -hmm. and do you think it's a psychological question probably i think i mean that's that i think there is i think there is something to look there I think there is something to look there in the deep atavism of human beings and probably it's not just a question of being smart, being intelligent, knowing things, being informed. I think there is a different layers or, or different layers of human conscious or unconsciousness and there is something to, to do there, I think. I mean, I think one thing that is so evident now is that Europe has for so long externalized, you know, questions of violence and sexuality too onto um, the so-called other, that they have not dealt, a lot of Europeans you know, have not dealt with this violence on a very personal level too, I think, and this is, there's, it has, there's a lot, yeah, on these two factors around violence and sexuality, which I think is uh, driving. Yeah, yes, even if their, even if the own violence of their society, uh, colonialism was a way of externalizing the violence, saying that we are enlightened, we are civilized, 
but in, in Algeria, in Indochine, in Cameroon, in a lot of places, they're, they're, they're military, they're, they, they, they produce a huge amount of violence, you know, and, 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 and it was a way of presenting oneself, you know, are being civilized, but unleashing their own violence on other people, you know, externalizing the violence. And, 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 and narrating the idea of a, of a peaceful society, to, it's not true. Mm. Uh, so it's a lie. Yeah. It's, a, it's lie. a lie. In Algeria, yeah. in Algeria, the French soldiers raped two millions of women. Mm. Two millions. Mm. Mm. So it, it also, I mean, these are very big questions mm. and highly systemic questions, but thinking through it, I mean, I, I guess there is, if you think about the individual and how an individual can contribute, it is about also working through one's own you know, yes, but, re repressed or... But it's or also a kind of uh, romantic view sometimes yeah. because it's important to, 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 to work on one spirituality, one's own revolution, yeah. one own, you know, self, yeah. lightening yourself. Yeah. But we have also to work on the st 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 structure of societies, you know. Simultaneously. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The, the two. Yeah. But if, if the society is, is, is trapped, you know, in a, in a bad dynamics, it will end, you know, by affecting individuals and the question is we have to work uh, sim uh, simultaneously but sometimes the question is where do we have to start <laughs> yes <laughs> you know you, you know and what is as an, as an economist what is the most efficient place to start you know, you know sometimes you know but where do you feel it could it, where, where could be a starting point no i think that probably uh, uh, I, I think there's a kind of dialectic on these on these two terms. Uh, if I s look at a, a, a figure like the Mahatma Gandhi, mm -hmm. he linked the two. He was not just in his a ashram, mm -hmm. from working on his mm -hmm. own, you know, spirituality. You know, he understood that he had to work on himself mm -hmm. to become a Mahatma, mm -hmm. but but also he had to organize to to free India, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to work on a collective level. Mm -hmm. And I think probably you know there is there is something there. Mm -hmm. If you if you look at Martin Luther King, he, he was a priest, but he didn't stay in, in his church, you know, and and guiding the souls. You know, he understood that he had to go out. He was a civil rights activist. Yes, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. he yeah. had to, to become an activist, organize mm -hmm. people, you know, a community till till humble level. But at the same time, being inspired by the by the lad, he was trying to dig in himself. But he tried to articulate the two. Mm -hmm. Even if Nelson Mandela, if you read his diaries in prisons, he was meditating in, in prisons yeah. and trying to gain wisdom. Yeah. But he understood too that this wisdom was to be organized in you know, a social level. So I think the two. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a long process. I Absolutely. It's a very long process. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you too. so much. Thank you. So thank you too. Thank you. Thank you.